Congressman Matt Cartwright of Pennsylvania. Congressman, good to have you with us. The Democrats are, are looking for an apology. Uh, and then, of course, there's also the question about whether the chairman actually broke the rules or not. Are you going to get an apology? Is this going to have any impact? It doesn't sound like we are, Ed. Uh, I need to tell you, I'm on that committee. I was 25 feet away from Chairman Issa when he pulled that stunt. It was uh, astonishing to me, actually, to watch him reach over Elijah Cummings and hit the switch to turn off Representative Cummings' microphone. Uh, I've never seen anything like that, and I checked with people who have been in the Congress for dozens of years. They've never seen anything like that. So uh, to say that a simple phone call uh, in the face of such a public affront, uh, such a public uh, humiliation uh, that, that he inflicted on ranking member Issa, to say that a private phone call apology is enough uh, is ridiculous. And I totally am in agreement with my colleague uh, Dan Kildee out of Flint, Michigan, when he brought that motion yeah. demanding a public apology. D did the chairman break the rules? He says he didn't. Democrats say he did break the rules. W w what is it? My understanding is he absolutely did because there is a rule, there's a House rule that allows equal time. Uh, he gave zero time to the ranking member of the, the full committee, uh, which is a flagrant violation of the rules. Uh, I have no idea what Chairman Issa was thinking uh, when he did that, other than that um, uh, ranking member Cummings was going to score some points, uh, was going to point out so, uh, that, that uh, what, it, what the witness could yeah. have said might have uh, shed some new light on the subject. Bottom line here, Congressman, is if the Democrats don't step up to this kind of behavior, who knows what the next hearing is going to be like or how the next committee is going to be handled. God forbid if some of these Tea Partiers end up being committee chairmen, nobody's going to have any dissenting voices in Congress. I mean, isn't that really the motivation about what this could snowball to? Uh, well, you know, the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, uh, I've been on it for a year and a quarter now, and all it is is a, a press generator uh, for the Republican spin machine. Uh, you know, this thing that you've seen infecting all of Congress, the dysfunction that you've seen, that you've seen, it's, it's first of all, it's, it's zombie legislation uh, to repeal uh, the Affordable Care Act 40 plus times, maybe over 50 times, depending on how you count it. But that's infected the committees as well. And we see this in the Oversight Committee where they keep, uh, you know, uh, re-spinning, recasting the same old phony scandals over and over again. So the bottom line now is uh, the next move for the Democrats. Will there be an effort, a fight to remove ISA as the chair of the Oversight Committee? And what avenues can the Democrats take? Uh, well, what we've seen so far is we bring motions and then, you know, because the, the GOP have the majority in, in the Congress, they can uh, simply, you know, Air Cantor got up and uh, moved to table uh, our, our motion. Uh, and uh, yeah. that went to a recorded vote, and He's they there. win, and that's the end of that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It, 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 th so what we saw yesterday is about the best thing the Democrats can do to bring attention to the country that this is how overbearing and how insulting the Republicans can be, and this is the best uh, way to call for an apology, call for a protest, and do what the Democrats do. Removing Daryl Issa... It, it, it isn't going to happen, and n not in the age of obstruction or fair play and debate. It won't happen. Congressman, good to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. I Thanks so much. Matt Cartwright with us My pleasure, from Pennsylvania.